Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Israel is a fascinating country. While it may only be around 20,000 kilometers square in land area, it has over 9 million residents. And while it may have a deep history that we will get onto in a moment, there's so much more to this country than just that. I found out all kinds of fun facts about the nation. Like, did you know that Israel is one of the world's leaders in technological developments? Novel creations like the laser keyboard came out of the country. And way more important inventions can be traced to the nation, with things like the USB flash drive and even mobile phones themselves are thought to be Israeli creations. Though what about that name of Israel? Well this name is somewhat incredibly old and incredibly new. Israel as a nation that it is today only really came into creation in 1948. However while this country was only created just over 70 years ago, we have recorded existence of the name Israel from over 3200 years ago, which could possibly make it one of the oldest country names still in use to this day, though that's just me thinking out loud. This recorded existence comes from an ancient Egyptian slab, which is known as the Menepta Stele. This slab retells the military conquests of Pharaoh Menepta, with one of the lines being, Israel is laid waste, its seed is no more. But despite this, there's a debated even earlier recording of the name from Egypt, thought to be around 200 years older than the aforementioned slab. Whichever one is older, it's clear to see the name is incredibly ancient. And while we may be able to say the name is super old, can we say surely where it comes from and what it means? Well, we have one explanation of the name, and it comes from the Bible. This story tells us that the name derives from the name of someone of deep importance, though his name wasn't Israel initially, but Jacob. The story goes that one night Jacob was attacked by a celestial being. The two fought all night and into the morning. The being was impressed that Jacob didn't stop fighting, so decided to bless him. And as Genesis 32:28 tells us, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And so Jacob, now under the name of Israel, became an important figure in the religion, and his name would go on to be the name of this country. Though what exactly does this name of Israel mean? Well, it is something that is known as a theophoric name, which is defined as derived from or bearing the name of God. But in more simple terms, names that can be seen as containing the name of God and some kind of verb or description. Take an example the name of Daniel, which means God is my judge, and Michael, which means who is like God. These two names along with Israel have something in common, and that's the E-L at the end. And this is the part of these names that represent a deity, as El is a name from an ancient Semitic language meaning God. So, in the name Israel, we know the El part means God. So, what about the Isra part? Well, there seems to be a lot of debate around this ancient word. The idea I like the most is that it means a struggle or fight. So, the name Israel means he who fights with God or God shall fight, which of course reflects the collision Jacob had with the being that led to him being given the name of Israel. And of course, Israel ended up becoming the key figure for the Israelites, and it's thought they would have used this name as they believe that God was fighting with them on their side. And over history, the land where the modern country is now went through all kinds of changes, from being split into the two kingdoms of Israel and Judah, to being part of the Ottoman Empire, to being controlled by the British under the name Mandatory Palestine. However, in the 19th and early 20th century, the Jewish Zion movement took shape. Those in this movement believed that this land controlled by the British should be re-established as the Jewish homeland. Many Jewish people in Europe immigrated to this land, and of course with the impact that the world wars had on the Jewish community, demand for a homeland from the Zion Zionist movement grew louder. In May 1948, the British controlled land that did in fact become an independent country. It is said that a vote was held for deciding what to call this new country. Other names like Zion and Zaba were also up for debate. How the name Israel won out, reflecting the land's ancient past. It was supposedly picked by David Ben Gurion, who went on to become the first prime minister of the nation. Now, that was something of an abridged and simplified retelling of the history and etymology of Israel, and that's because it is a nation of a serious deep, complex, and divisive history. It has the kind of history that will anger the comment section regardless of what I say, so I'm going to have the comment bunker nice and ready for this one. So please remember that I'm no way a trained historian or an expert in this field, or any field in all honesty. I just google stuff for a day or so then write a script about it. However, if you really do want to tell me how awful I am, go right ahead. That's what the comment section is for, I guess. And I'd rather you hurl your abuse at me than each other. This complex and divisive history in Israel can even be seen on a modern map of the country. You 
notice that the country is kind of an odd shape. It gets kind of thin on its west side, as if there's a chunk missing out of this country, and that's because there kind of is. This area of land has a deep history unto itself, along with another part of land you may have thought was part of Israel, which is to the west of the nation, and these have names unto themselves. They are called the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Together, these are known as the Palestinian Territories, the Occupied Palestinian Territories, or even just Palestine, as these two land areas are recognised as a state by 138 other members of the United Nations. The name Palestine for this land is a Roman adaptation of the Greek name for this land, Philistia. Ancient Greek writers called it this after the people who lived here, the Philistines, which yes is now a word we use in a somewhat negative connotation for someone uncultured. How the Philistines got their name however we don't seem to be too sure. However when the Romans came to this land, they used the adapted name of Palestine and called the people who lived here Palestinians, as we do to this day. But who exactly are the Palestinians? Well that in of itself seems to be a pretty big question. I have read that at its simplest, Palestinians are the Arab, primarily Muslim, population in the land of Israel. In a more detailed explanation, the Palestinians are believed to be the descendants of an ancient tribe who lived in this land before the Israelites even got there. However there is also an argument that the idea of a Palestinian race doesn't exist as the Arabs of this land have no unique language, religion or culture unto themselves. Like I said this is all very divisive and complex. Though what I think we really need to know about this to explain these Palestinian territories is that when it came to 1948, when Israel was setting up to become an independent nation for Jews, the Arab Muslims who lived here, who were slash are known as Palestinians, were unhappy about it. They saw this land as rightfully theirs. This area of the world is incredibly important to the Abrahamic religions, especially Judaism and Islam. Important settlements to these religions like Nazareth and Bethlehem are in Israel, and the city of Jerusalem holds many important religious sites of importance to Muslims. Muslims and Jews, so it's easy to see why people of both religions wanted the land for themselves. Early plans from the United Nations attempted to separate the land evenly between the Palestinians and the Israelis, though this failed and led to war in 1948, in which the Arabs of Israel and the surrounding Arab countries such as Egypt and Jordan hoped to maintain the land. However, the Israelis won this war, so the majority of this land stayed under their control, though not the entire land. Another war in 1967, known as the Six Day War due to its brevity, allowed the surrounding Arab nations to gain more land in Israel. The land of the Gaza Strip was claimed by Egypt in 1967 and the land of the West Bank was claimed by Jordan in 1967 too. However in 1988 both countries gave up the claim of the land and gave their claim over to the state of Palestine. Honestly these maps and tables from Wikipedia really helped make this more clear. Nevertheless this cemented the Gaza Strip and the West Bank as the Palestinian territory we know today. However, the Israelis do play roles in these lands, but this seems to be how the land has stayed since that 1967 war, with there being a lot of conflict between Israel and the Palestinian territories and ideas of how to resolve this issue, with ideas ranging from allowing Palestine to be fully independent or merging all this land to be one big Israel or one big Palestine. It's definitely an issue too large and complex for an idiot like myself sitting in their basement to explain perfectly, so once again apologies for the many toes I may have stepped on with this one. Like I mentioned, Go berate me in the comment section if that helps you. Why don't we steer away from Israel-Palestine relations and go back to an area I have a bit more knowledge in? names. Why is the area that was initially claimed by Egypt called the Gaza Strip? Well the strip part derives from its shape, being somewhat strip-like. But what about the Gaza part? Well the name for this region comes from the name of the primary settlement within it, Gaza City. Gaza is believed to come from the Hebrew Azar, which is believed to mean strong city. Why this city was dubbed to be strong I don't know. I read this city has been conquered many times, so it could be seen as meaning because the strong have conquered it, though I also read that in the bible the very strong Samson was prisoned in the city but was able to escape due to his strength. Either way, it seems that strength is a theme within this city. As of right now, the Gaza Strip is under the control of Hamas, a fundamentalist party who won an election there in 2006. Their wish to have a singular Palestine state instead of Israel. Many people have branded them terrorists, and while Israel do not occupy the Gaza Strip, they have a tight blockade on Gaza, making it hard for people and goods to get in and out of the area. The West Bank, however, is under Israeli occupation. Though it is controlled by the Palestinians, authority. It seems life in the West Bank isn't as disruptive as life in Gaza, as these Israeli troops who occupy the West Bank force restrictions on Palestinian movement and allow Jewish settlers to build communities in this land. And as I mentioned earlier, the West Bank is home to many important religious sites like Bethlehem and Jericho. Even the city of Jerusalem is within the West Bank. 
However, despite what an inconspicuous name it may sound like, West Bank is the name that I'm interested in the most in all of this, as looking at a map of Israel shows us something of an issue with this name. The West Bank is in the east of Israel. So why on earth is it called the West Bank when it's in the east? Well, remember how I said that the West Bank was initially claimed by Jordan? To them, this would have been the West. One person's east is another's west, I guess. But specifically, it's the West Bank, with the bank in this name not referring to the place you keep your money, but rather a river bank. And if you look at a map of the West Bank, you will see this eastern border lines up with the West Bank of the River Jordan, which explains this rather confusing name. However, I also read the name Cisjordan is used in some Romance languages, which means on this side of the River Jordan. It's difficult to say what the future holds for this part of the world, and what will become of these names. Will the names of Israel and Palestine stay on the map together, or will only one be present in the future? And two, what about the names of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank? These are questions that only time will be able to answer. Israel was suggested by Yotam Ben Tovim, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as Name Explains Patron Saint of Israel. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a Name Explained video? If so, then please consider of donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Daisy at me so know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.